Waterfalls make up some of the world's most spectacular landforms, and there are many thousands across the globe that you've probably heard of. Perhaps some of the most famous examples include Niagara Falls, found on the border between the USA and Canada, Iguazu Falls, found on the border between Argentina and Brazil, Victoria Falls, found on the border between Zimbabwe and Zambia, and some pretty cool ones a little bit close to home in the likes of the Brecon Beacons and Snowdonia National Park. But just how are these magnificent natural formations created? Well, waterfalls are mostly found in the upper and middle courses of the river, wherever energy and velocity is high, and where there is a considerable amount of vertical erosion taking place. Perhaps, before we go any further however, we should try and recap on some of the different types of erosion. Firstly, hydraulic action is the type of erosion where the sheer force of the flowing water washes away any loose material. Abrasion is where any stones that are carried within the river channel are washed up against the bed of the banks, wearing them away in a sandpaper in action. Corrosion is where the slightly acidic river water dissolves rocks that are made from certain minerals. Lastly, attrition which is where stones collide with each other and are then broken down, becoming smaller and rounder. The two main erosional processes that we will be looking at in the formation of a waterfall, however, are these two here, hydraulic action and abrasion. And it is these erosional processes combined with some other factors that lead to the creation of waterfalls. Waterfalls develop when a band of hard, resistant rock, like granite, lies over a softer, less resistant rock, like sandstone. As the water flows over the hard rock and the soft rock, erosion sets to work through the processes of hydraulic action and abrasion. With the softer rock being less resistant than the hard rock, however, the softer rock, as a result, is eroded much quicker. At this point, you have the making of the beginning of the waterfall, and as the erosion continues, a plunge pool is formed. In this plunge pool, rocks are thrown against one another and are eroded via attrition, meaning they become smaller and rounder. There is also ongoing hydraulic action and abrasion, which makes the plunge pool deeper, but also sees it start to cut back here. As a result, this means the hard rock above is being undercut. As it is undercut more and more, an overhang is created, and with nothing to support it, it will eventually collapse through the force of gravity and fall into the plunge pool. This process doesn't stop there, however. It repeats itself over and over again, meaning that the waterfall retreats very slowly upstream. By retreating further and further upstream, this creates another landform one which we refer to as a gorge. And the further back a waterfall retreats, the bigger a gorge will get. Describing and explaining the formation of a waterfall is a popular exam question. Therefore, you should know the processes involved in the formation of a waterfall, but also be able to display these on an annotated diagram. Hope this video has been of help to you, and I wish you all the best in your exams. Over and out.